Okay. Hello, and welcome to Magpie Tales, the first podcast uh, of what Deering Town's official podcast, I think we can call it. Uh, joining me, Mr. Tom Park. Tom, how are you? Very well, mate. And Luke Cannon. Luke, how are you? I'm good, thanks, yeah. Good. Uh, I think the first question really for you is, what's it like to be back? Yes, it's nice. I've, I've, I've been in this building before, so it's nice to see um, what the lads come to every day. Um, I think what Toasty set up here it is really good. Um, but yeah, I haven't been back since the, the awards night, and obviously I haven't been on that pitch since the, the charity game, really. But yes, not much has changed, to be fair. But like I say, this is, this is a good setup here. And, and fond memories of this place, I would imagine. Yeah, that's a lot of memories. Um, I, I played in a, a good team when I was here. It was a good, good group of lads. Um, we obviously went on to win the treble with Toasty, um, and then we won the league as well under, under Matt Henman there. So there's a lot of good memories, yeah. Toast, what's it like to have, have Luke back at the club? Um, I think when, you, when players go away um, and you keep getting year on year out of youth players, you sometimes sort of obviously have to concentrate on the ones that you've got, but those obviously players that stick in your memory from forever, and obviously he's one of them for numerous <laughs> reasons. Um, but it's good to see him. It's, I think it's good as a, as a coach that you see people go on and have good careers, and um, it's great that they come home and keep supporting the club and the people that are still there, so it's great. He, he touched upon the treble winning side. What, what was that like for you, that period? To, to be a coach at that side, what was it like? Yeah, um, really, really good because I think um, i just come off the back of managing Norfolk um, and met Matt, had a really good relationship with Matt Henman um, and this was a club that I used to play for when I was younger so it was some, somewhere where um, we, we saw building a, a, a club um, and uh, through myself and Matt we were able to attract some really good young players, some that had never been in academies. Um, and had heart and desire and passion. Some that had been in academies like, like Luke and had a lot of talent, and it all came together. And um, they were a very interesting bunch um, of characters, but um, winners. And they done the club really proud that year, beating teams like Histon in finals. So who were at the time were a football club. So mm. Luke, you've, you've obviously had the full journey playing non-league football. Now played professionally. How, how do you look back on, on your time at this club, and how high do you hold it in, in your career, and, and what it gave to you? Yeah, I've, I've mentioned it before. Um, obviously, getting released from Cambridge uh, at that time, I didn't think that I kind of like fell out of love with football at that period. Um, at 18, getting told you're not going to get a professional contract is quite. Um, don't, it can kind of like dampen your hopes of becoming a professional. So coming here, Matt um, made me feel really welcome. Like I say, it was a, it was a great group of lads. Uh, some lads that I'd known from being at the academy, like Ollie, Gus. Nicky Howe, like players that I looked up to when I was at um, Norwich. Um, but yeah, it, it helped me get back on my feet and it allowed me to play men's football. Um, I think that helped build my career to where I am now. Well, what's it like as a young player to get released? Because I think in academies we only really ever hear of the success stories. So, so what is it like that, that moment where you get told that you haven't quite made the grade? Yeah, it can be quite disheartening, but um, I've, I've said it a few times, I, I didn't think that I was mature enough at that age to, to go in and play professional football. I think uh, playing non-league and coming up the way I have has allowed me to develop better um, and maturity levels wise. Um, it's allowed me to, to go on and get, get my dream, which is to be a professional footballer. But um, like I say, it was, it's quite hard because at that age, I didn't really know what I was going to do after football, I had nothing to fall back on. Um, I, I ended up going away and working at Tesco for like six, seven months just to get some money to go to university with and then obviously got into New, um, Northumbria University and then yeah, it kind of kick-started from there. But I think like as, as a young player and you, you don't achieve anything at that age, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. Like I think I spoke at the awards night and I said to the lads here, like there's always different routes to, to get back into football and I think going and doing my studies and playing football alongside that, that like helped, helped me get where I am now. Mm. You, you touched upon earlier falling out of love with football after, after you got released. How did you fall back in love with it? Um, like I said, I think it helps to, to be in a, a good team with like big characters. I think like the personalities wise we had here at Deering was a, was a good bunch of lads. Um, we, we did things like when we were in the league, we went away to like Ibiza and stuff like that. And I think it just helped gel as a team. and. Um, when I went to university, uh, the, the lads that were in a similar position to myself had been released from academies, um, wanted to go through the education route again to, to, um, just in case you needed something to fall back on. And I think being in that group of lads 
all having failed at that age, I think helped because I think everyone wants to be a professional footballer when you don't make it at that age. And I think everyone helped get through that stage and just, yeah, I think it was just playing football every day at university with mates that you get on with really well was just, just helped you. Was it, was it difficult mentally to go from a position where you're in an academy and the end goal is, is fairly obvious whenever anyone's in the academy, I think, to then being removed from that all and, and sort of having to make your own way? Yeah, like um, I spoke to my parents when I got released and it just like it just disheartens you. Like you, you've played football all your life from like nine, eight years old and then to get told at 18 you, you're not going to get a professional contract, it is quite hard. But um, it's just, like I said, I think going into non-league and going all the, the way back up helped me massively like mature and like I said, I speak to the lads now that don't get offered contracts and stuff like that. It's not the end of the world. There's always different routes to get back into the game. And um, luckily enough, it, it worked out all right. Toast, can you remember the first time you saw Luke play and what did you think? Um, I can remember the first time I met him. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Um, I work with a lot of players who get released and uh, for all numerous reasons. And um, Luke was never entitled, so he never came out and thought he was above the level he had dropped to. Um, so the thing is, his qualities that he had was his personality, um, his work rate, he's a winner. Um, it wouldn't matter if he was in a five-a-side pitch in a car park, he'd want to win. Um, fit, uh, covers ground, and I thought he knew his position well, so he'd probably agree he was just quite good at everything in his position. Um, and then his personality dragged him through matches. Um, I just think he got, with the adult football experience he got early, just got him better and better and better at doing maybe the, the horrible side of the game which he'd probably agree maybe equips him well for what he does now. Yeah, so all action, midfielder. <laughs> we're, we're at a club now where there really has an emphasis on youth, where we're getting players out, playing adult football quite early on is, is a big thing yeah. for the club and for the players. Um, did you, I mean, you mentioned it there, seeing, seeing the benefits in Luke, but what exactly in, in his game changed, do you think, playing adult football at a, at a young age? Knowing where to stand. So I think we'd all agree that sometimes in academies, Rightly so, they get taught the right way to play football. Mm -hmm. So little things, like when it goes to your right back in academy football as a centre midfielder, you're probably taught to maybe get round the ball, to get on the ball, to change direction. At this level, sometimes you're actually going to be on the shoulder of a midfielder because you know that they're going to whack it in a channel mm -hmm. and you might have to win a second ball or get in the box. So I think probably just knowing when to show and knowing when to run, probably the little things. and personality so when you're getting someone at London who's a builder who's paying for his mortgage and his kids on a Tuesday night and they see someone with a lovely haircut and a coloured pair of boots <laughs> um, and they're threatening you and getting into you you don't necessarily get that in under 21 or under 18 football because it's a little bit too nice for the right reasons mm -hmm. so I think that other side of his game learning how to back up the mouth that he had because he had a bit of chat <laughs> but backing it up in the right way do, do you, you think know? that's a better education 100%. Or a better educational step to take into adult football at a young age as opposed to going through the 18s and the 21s at an academy yes and no so if you, I think if you're, if you're fortunate enough to be uh, the type of player that you are in the right setup with the right manager in the academy you're laughing because you're going to make it and they're going to push you through um, I think if you're in the wrong environment, I know this is obvious, but if your face don't quite fit or let's say you're a ball playing midfielder that play for a manager that want to whack it and you don't fit, um, I think you may be best to maybe do something slightly different. And I think sometimes that you can maybe rot in an under 23 environment. Um, I think Todd Cantwell is the prime example of that where I think Stuart Webber mentioned it in your last interview that you had with him where to get him out on loan no one, anyone in England that was brave enough to take a punt on him because of the type of player that he was but that move to Holland has actually and effectively made his career for all the right reasons so one year abroad in the right environment around the right people in adult football away from his comfort zone is now is now a Premier League player so I think it has a major benefit Luke's obviously made it to professional football uh, achieved his dreams I, I would imagine um, what did you see in Luke that perhaps it isn't in other players um, from, from sort of a point of view where they get released from academies? What's the difference between someone like Luke making it and someone who doesn't? Realistic. So uh, accountable. So when he was released, he didn't make an excuse. He went, I oh, weren't good enough for whatever reason. But then he didn't then 
dwell on that. He went, if I, I know I can be good enough. So I think he just went away and worked all the things that he knew he weren't ready at, and a lot of it he, he said was mental. But he embraced that he wasn't good enough and, and addressed it. Um, and he's humble. He won't. He's not a player that you think. Oh, what's he going on about Instagram and tweets and what he looked like? It's not about that with him. He just done his job. I, I remember a game here. The game where I thought this boy's got something was um, we had a game against Norwich City and he got played at left back. I think it was against Redmond and then one of the Murphys in the second half. I think they all swapped. And you're out of position, not on your best foot. Not only you've played there before, had, had your left back. I think that was a running joke. <laughs> and then it team. ended up going to a whole yeah, season. Team, and, uh, played and, left back for a whole season. And, and listen, there is, there's having a good game, and then there's having people in your pocket. And that particular game, I'm not just saying it, he pocketed them both. Premier League players, by the way. Um, and a lot of young lads, they're looking up to their idols, would have caved in in front of a quite a few hundred people and mm-hmm. I thought he was man of the match by a mile even so that Russell Martin had stuck his head in the change room after the game didn't necessarily say it to him directly but the team I think it was 1-0 on the day that, that game and um, Russell Martin stuck his head in and commended the performance which was highlighted by him really he was outstanding so I think I come away from there going he's actually got something however I would admit knowing that he was then going to Gateshead at uni I thought alcohol women Luke Cannon <laughs> might not go together but he's proved me you have you're like I'm not being funny he's got a degree um, worked hard and he you know he's a role model to everyone now mm. and for you obviously played in academy football played in non-league football do you think non-league football gave you a completely different education that the academy football did yeah well similar to what Toasty said I think uh, just the physical side of things um, he touched on saying going going down to London on a Tuesday night, playing against men that are doing it as a part-time job. I think you, sometimes you don't get that kind of training or experiences playing in uh, academy football. Um, obviously, the, the talent that the lads have playing 23s football is, is class, and they're obviously there for a reason, but I feel like you do need to go out on loan and play play men's football at some point. I think you, t- you touched on Todd Cantwell there. Um, you saw what going out on loan can do for you. Came back and he played loads of games last year in the champ. So, um, yeah, I think it is quite important um, to put yourself out of your comfort zone and go playing against men that not necessarily want to play football. They want to get involved, cause scraps and kick, kick rubbish at you, basically. I think it just makes you mentally stronger. And then when you go back into that environment, not only do you have like the technical ability, but you've also got like the mentality to not go like miss out on tackles or go in and don't be afraid to get involved and stuff like that. It's, it's funny you mentioned sort of mental toughness. I was going to come on to that and say, did playing non-league football make you mentally stronger? But I suppose it did as you touched upon it. Yeah, I think so. Um, especially when I went up to Newcastle. Um, when I was at university, we had a scholarship so that we had a team that played similar level to what Deerham did, but up, up in Newcastle. And I feel like the physicality of the the men up there is a lot different to the to the people down south. Um, they, they would literally just go out on a Saturday and just want to get in fights and just try and kick everything out of you. So I think that was mentally strong. You've got to use it as like a compliment as well um, and use it as a positive that they want to try and kick you because you know that you're doing something right. And I think that goes back to talking about mentality as well. Um, you've just got to use that as a positive and not get yourself down because you're getting kicked about. You should use it as... A positive and yeah and and toast mentioned there you went to uni and as i said could have had your head turned by by different factors perhaps away from <laughs> from football what what ensured that you did keep along that that sort of straight and narrow and in football and kept playing football when you went up there um i think it just goes down to like the group of lads like we were always playing games that we had like two or three games a week with our university league as well as well as the, the saturday um league um, my family as well, like they, they always knew how important football was to me and maybe like he said, <laughs> alcohol and stuff like that, but that's part of the experience of going to university. Like I think um, my mum and dad just kept me grounded and like I said, I, I do think I'm quite a humble person, so I wouldn't have let something like that distract me from achieving what I wanted to. And, and that Norwich game that, that Toast referenced again, did, did you realise quite how good you were in that game? <laughs> I'm not sure about having someone in my pocket, I don't want to say that, but um, I think... Yeah, I did all right. It was it was a good day because I think, like you said, they only beat us one nil on the day. They had quite a good team out. I think it was Hooper who scored the goal. But um, yeah, it was just nice to play against players that you watch on TV and 
like aspired to be basically. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good day. Uh, like you said, touched on playing left back. Just thought it was going to be for one game and ended up being the whole season. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't mind whatever position it is as long as, long as I'm playing and I work hard for the team. Well, what's it like when, when you're a player and you do get asked to, to play out of position, particularly against the, the strength of opposition that you had that day? Is that quite tough to adapt to? Yeah, I'm, I just think I've got that mentality of like, as long as I'm playing and I'm starting the game, I don't, know, I don't mind where I play. You could put me in goal or <laughs> centre-back. As long as I'm playing and I'm enjoying my football, I'll, I'll, I'll do a job where, wherever you put me. But yeah, there was a lot of good talent out that day. Look, it was like Nathan Redman, who's obviously gone on to play in the Prem and have a very successful career. But it was just nice to play against someone like that and just see how far you were off it. And, and was there ever a point, just to rewind slightly, that, that you were going to quit football or, or stray away from football and perhaps um, sort of take up other, other things? Yeah, I think that's why I went to university because at that point in between getting released and going to university, I was playing for Durham. Um, I was working at Tesco as well, like getting up at like four or five in the morning to start work at six, doing like five, five days a week and stuff like that. And I think it just gave me like a reality check to see, look, like there's, there's more to life than football. But at, that, at the same time, coming here, um, and playing with the, the lads that we had, um, the manager, Toasty himself, and people like that who were really keen on bringing the young lads through and helping develop them as players. I think that helped. But um, there, was a, there was probably a point where you think, look, it's not worked out for whatever reason. Like, I'm going to have to go and get a job and play, play part-time football and go to university and stuff like that. But in the back of my head, I always thought that I was going to get another chance to, to do what I wanted to do, obviously play professional football and stuff like that, so I think yeah, it's worked out right in the end. <laughs> and then for you, you see, see a lot of academy players come and go, um, what, what's the difference between someone like Luke and someone who perhaps doesn't make it, is it, is it just hard work? Parenting is massive, mm -hmm. parental advice is huge, you know, um, it's about keeping um, a reality check. You know, um, and, and, and what is success? So if you look at, you know, I don't want to kill anyone's dreams, but you have to be realistic. So um, what is the percentage of people that make it? We're in a county with one club. We're not in the middle of London where there's loads all around. And we come from a very, very nice area. So we're not, as Luke mentioned earlier, sometimes not mentally and physically as advanced as some of the other people. We take longer. So if you look at Luke, done it later on. Fraser Blake Tracy, done it later on. Charlie Clark now, you know, who's now here, but he's, you know, as we know, he's got an agent and he's getting trials, doing it later on. So I think there's a thing for Norfolk lads about doing it later on and growing up a little bit later mm -hmm. than everyone. Luke uh, done it the right way, went away to Newcastle early, done you know, university, tough place, and went went through the leagues. I think that it, what is success? So is it a, is it a failure if you are released and you get a university degree and you are paid to play football at a good level for the rest of your life? Is that a failure? I'm not sure. That might be a success to some people. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think if you can stay in the game, whether it be a footballer um, or a coach or a part-time player, as long as possible, um, and you reach your maximum level of your potential and you're happy, there's a lot to be said for that. I think sometimes people maybe think they might be a bit better than what they are and it doesn't necessarily always come from them. It comes from the external pressures around them. So it's about being realistic. This is, this is a question for both of you, really, but, but do you think professional academies sell that idea of a dream to, to players? Um, I think they get a little bit more bad rep than maybe what they deserve. I think that, uh, in my personal opinion, recruitment in the, in the country would be an area that maybe needs addressing because you, you could be the best um, under-11s coach in Europe. But if, I don't, sure. if, I don't <laughs> give you, if I don't give you potential you can only take them so far and the word is potential I could give you the best under 11 that is bigger and runs quicker than anyone but their potential might not be very good long term you can only take that person so far you're not a miracle worker mm -hmm. so for me it's about giving football clubs potential that you've got to sit, which is hard no one's got the magic wand with that it's about looking what they're going to be like when they're 21, 22 not when they're 11 mm -hmm. you know so for me that's I don't think academies sell a dream. That's their job to sell a dream. Their job is to create professional footballers if they get the sack. So they have got to do that. I think maybe that our level is 
bit too guilty of selling a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a lot, lots of academies around here that aren't professional that sell a dream. Trial here, professional here. I think we're the, we're the ones that maybe have got to address that. Um, I think it's just about making people better. He, he, he said it himself, he wants to become better. Um, you don't get better without hard work. And if you haven't got a mindset at the process, you're not going to be a footballer. So for me, stop looking at the outcome of everything. Work hard every day, get better. And like, like what he's done, it takes care of itself. And what's your views on, on pro academies now that you've, you've sort of experienced both sides of it? Yeah, um, I think it's good. Uh, obviously, you get the coaching and stuff like that and you're around players of the similar ability to yourself and you do get better. You train nearly every day. Um, even when I was like under nines, I was in maybe three times a week. And like you say, you're just making yourself better. But I think he's nailed it on the head. Like, I don't think like, their job is to sell you the dream. They, they want to attract the best players and stuff like that. But at the same time, I think you just need to stay humble. You need to... I think that's maturity as well. You'll, you'll learn as you get older to, to stay humble and people around you as well. Like You need to trust trust the people that are going to give you good advice and stuff like that and, and want to see you do well and not just the people that... I don't want to say make money off you and stuff like that, but I don't want you to, to fill your head with false hope and stuff that maybe isn't realistic. And I think you should know yourself what, what level you want to try and achieve and what level you think you can play at. And, yeah, just just stay humble and work hard each day. For, for your journey, how big has mindset been? Because it seems like, from, from what you said so far, have, getting your mindset correct has been a big sort of strength to, to, to your game on and off the pitch. Yeah, I think I touched on it when, just talking about when I got released at 18, like I wasn't mature enough at that age to go into professional football. Um, I think going away and doing the stuff that I have and learning that at that age I wasn't ready so I had to go away and do stuff like that. It, was like, it was a reality check but um, I think <laughs> just it makes you like appreciate it so much more like I, I never didn't think that I was going to be a footballer but you have to just think look at the end of the day not like you said how many what percentage of people go on to be a professional footballer mm -hmm. so it's just nice to have something to, to fall back on in, in later on in life. As, as a coach, how big is mindset? Because it's almost the one thing you can't coach, isn't it? How, how players act mentally. Uh, the, yeah, I don't know whether it's, it's say you can coach it, but I think it's about the environment that you set from an early age. I think if you let people get away with the stuff, you're a product of your environment. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep hearing all the time, Norfolk boys haven't got the mindset to be footballers. So I agree with it in the sense that we come from a very, very fort more fortunate background than some of the other parts of the country. So we, we have got a detriment in that effect because we're nice, but I'm not having that. I think if you set the right training environment and, and the right game environment mentally, I think you can get tough footballers. He could be the nicest person off the pitch in the world, but as soon as he steps over the white line, it's a mindset. And that you can achieve that. Um, I think, well, Luke, what you've done to highlight this better than anyone is that when you step away from academy football, more training in the week, better pitches, better equipment, better coaches, better players around you, you're playing against Chelsea's, right? And then you're stepping away and you're playing on, no disrespect, London team away, Bobble City, rain, horrible ball, the ball's up in the air. How did you cope with that change and how did you stay fit to get back into it? Because for me, like, that's the biggest fallout, them two things, and yeah. you've combated both of them. I'd, if I, even if I weren't, wasn't playing football, I'd always want to like stay fit, and I think that is like one of my biggest attributes in my game is that I am quite fit and I can cover quite a lot of ground in in the game. But like you say, going from playing on nice pitches where you're very fortunate to train in environments like Colney, for example, when I was there, and then like you say, no disrespect, but when you go away and play on teams on a Tuesday night, it's freezing cold, you've got mole hills on the pitch and stuff like that, and it just makes you appreciate it. Um, but yes, it, it was hard going to places like that. But I think you say it's a touch on mindset again. Like I, I was always had that mentality of that I, I wouldn't be too big for where, where I am. And I think you mentioned on that earlier as well. But like I said, I'd always want to keep myself fit because I always had a, a thought at the back of my head. I'd always get another opportunity. Mm. Do, do you think, and again, this is a question for both of you, do you think footballers become better players when they stop looking towards the end and actually try and improve and sort of appreciate the journey a bit more, which is a bit cliche, but do you so think it's that, hard that to, It's hard to do that and when you're, when you're always looking over your shoulder whether you're going to keep your place or not, I suppose. Yeah. So it's about, again, parent and people around you trying to keep you 
in that mindset. Yeah. But I think it's, it is a bit easy to say, don't think like that. I think because you, you, you are looking over your shoulder every five minutes and you are, am I getting released? Is someone else in on trial? Am I playing well enough? So, but, but then do you think that sort of environment is sort of a country driven thing? Is it, is it the environment that English football has? Is it Norfolk football? What, what creates that culture for you? Um, I think just people want it to be naturally successful. It's like if you care about something, you think more about it. So I think mm-hmm. that, you know, you, you, you're growing up watching Match of the Day, watching the national team play, and everyone's got this wonderful dream about being in front of thousands of people and playing. So I think it's just a natural human trait and a dream that you're trying to chase. And with that comes a little bit of pressure. And that's how you, how you deal with that pressure, really. So I just think it's about the, A, it's about your mindset. Um, B, it's about the people around you. I sometimes actually think it's better to, there's an there's a old saying, ignorance is bliss. Sometimes not being a little bit thick <laughs> might know, but might help you because you don't think a lot about everything, so you just get on with stuff. The more you analyse everything, the more you're not saying you think. No, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> four times four. Um, no, but, um, you know, for me, said it's about, well. it's about, <laughs> for me, it's about... Um, you know, not taking it too seriously, and like like what well, this man said again, again, the reason he's successful didn't take it too seriously, um, didn't overanalyze it, got on with it, admitted it when he didn't do well, and knew what he had to do to get better, and just worked at it, and and he was in the real world, product of the real world, had a dabble at the real world, probably thought oh, I do not fancy Tesco's ever, is that right? And well, then, no disrespect to Tesco, but yeah, I didn't didn't fancy working there. But, but um, you know, he's better for it. Mm. real world absolutely the, the, you've been in several environments again as, as we've spoken about which one do you think you found the most useful or have they all sort of made you better and made you a more rounded footballer and person uh, I think coming well I'm not just saying it because like Tosin we're out there but I think coming here and being allowed to to play football um, as a youngster in, in, a, in a men's team was was very influential because like you you got a, a 17 18 year old lad getting released from an academy you don't you're not going to put him straight into the team do you know what I mean like but luckily enough uh Matt obviously saw something in me and he put me straight into the team I think I had half a season with Durham um the first season I was here and I nearly played every game and I was only 18 at the time so I didn't expect to come into a team that was doing well in the league at the time and play that many minutes so I think that that helped massively, and also going to university as well, and just knowing that I've got something in case football doesn't work out, that I've got something to fall back on. That, that's what I say to like when people ask me like, what 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 would you do at that age? Like I'd, I've just been released from a club. I said, look, go and do it now while you're young, because then when your career does finish, because it's only a short career, you, you've got something to go straight into like um, out, outside of football. And and of course you you have got a degree, so. I suppose, did it make you almost more secure when knowing that you had that backup plan should things go wrong? Because there, there are perhaps a lot of young players, particularly um, perhaps in academies, who only have one vision and, and sort of a um, almost yeah one goal of, of being a footballer and, and that's their life. Yeah. And, and for you to take that step back and actually evaluate things a bit more, did that make your football better? I think so. Yeah, but I was, like you said, I, I only had one dream. I only thought I was going to be a footballer at that age from being involved at Norwich from eight all the way through to like 14, 15, you, you, your only thought is, I'm going to be a professional footballer. But um, like I said, I think going away and getting that degree is, is helped massively. Um, if I wasn't lucky enough to get the, the, the trial at Gateshead, which I got straight after graduation, um, my friend is a strength and conditioning coach and he goes, got his own company, goes round into teams and does sessions like that. And he, he said that with my degree, I could have gone on to work with him. So I already had a job opp- opportunity there. Mm-hmm. But um, I was just fortunate enough to get that trial. But like you say, it's, it is nice to have something to fall back on. How, how important is education and, and football? They sort of go hand in hand. Obviously, Toast does that for, for a day job. How, is it imp- how important is it to sort of balance those two aspects? Yeah, it's, it's massive because I think I, I'm a prime example of that. Like you, you can go away and get your studies and if, if football doesn't work out, then you've got something to go straight into. And I think it's really important that the lads buy into it. Like what Toasty's doing here is... is is um, really impressive and stuff like that, but like the lads have to buy into it. You you, you need to want to do it and work hard, because like I say, not everyone's going to be a professional footballer. And you see the lads from Desert going out to universities and getting the scholarships out there and doing doing it um, really well. But like I say, it is 
is important education and, and I think lads you have to do it like even when you was a, a scholar we had to do our like college on the side and I think a few of the lads actually went on to university as well and they got really good jobs through their degree so you just show it does work and, and for you how important is it obviously you, you do this as a day job um, see a lot of, of footballers come through this place how important is it to have a role model like Luke who's done it sort of worn the t-shirt and is now playing professional football as an end goal but also how important as a caveat is it to, to teach them that that's not everyone's route no, it's massive because to have a role model, everyone's aspiring to be him. Um, and when I'm telling them the truth, which sometimes they don't like hearing, and, and Lee and James, it's um, they can almost, or we can almost go, well, actually, he listened to this. Mm-hmm. You know, it might not be what you want to hear, but it's the truth. So, and he dealt with it, So, and he's where he is now. So, it gives us a bit of a carrot to maybe say things mm-hmm. that people maybe don't like to hear in the right way. Um, but also he represents a minority, remember that. So when they all come on this course, the chat isn't that you're not here to be a professional footballer, it's not. Uh, what we say is, if you want to be a professional footballer, you need to do what these guys are doing. right? Mm-hmm. If you want to be in America and have the best life experience ever, end up living in America with a full-time job on £80,000 a year in a nice part of the world, you need to follow these people. If you want to work in, in England in, in your own business, you need to follow this people. Seven McCarthy is an example. You know, he, his own um, you know fitness training thing he's, he's left here played for Norwich United um, and he's now working with the likes of James Madison is that a success story absolutely um, so there's lots of different areas where you can go and this thing about being successful surely if you stay in the, the game that you love and you can affect that game whether you are a player or a non-player you're winning so he, he's just a you know the upper end minority of someone you can look up to. Mm. And, and for you, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Luke earlier, how, how important is it to strike that balance between football and education, actually using football as, as a powerful good? Yeah, I, th- I think, like, but then to get better at anything, you need to educate yourself. So I think it's hand in hand. Like, why do Barcelona get their players to do degrees? So mm-hmm. I think it's about buying into being better, better in yourself. So when you do an educa- education course, you have to better yourself. So I think it's, again, going back to a mindset you know, and a fallout plan, like like what Luke said, you know, touch wood, this never happens to him. But if he was to get injured somewhere, he's got a university degree and he's now got a name in the game, he will have a job in football mm-hmm. after he finishes football. Someone else without a degree and his experience will not have a job after football. Remember, a football career is really short. What are you going to do when you're 35 and you're finished? Some people are lucky to retire on the money. A lot aren't. So... He, he will have a career in the game in, in whatever capacity afterwards. Mm. Get, getting that trial at Gateshead, did that almost feel like a second chance for you in terms of professional football? I know it's it sort of non-league still, but it, it must have felt like, obviously, quite a, a step up from here. Yeah. Um, so t- for you, did it, did it feel like a second chance, a second shot at something? Yeah, um, I actually got the call while I was on holiday. Um, my uh, coach at um, Team Northumbria at the time said, um, I've been on the phone to my friend at Gateshead and I've managed to sort you out a trial. Um, I was like, when does it start? And he's like, in five days. So I had one day after my RB for holiday and then it went straight in. So um, like I say, I was, I was making, even, even though I was on holiday and I wanted to enjoy myself, just to hear that I've been given the opportunity to have a trial, I was then going on runs on San Antonio Beach, whereas like, all my mates were going out and drinking and stuff. But I just thought, I've been waiting, what, I don't know, I think I was 22 when I signed, but I waited four or five years to get another opportunity like this. So I wanted to give it my all. And like I said, I was quite fortunate to get that opportunity. Um, and I just thought, look, this is my second chance now. I'm, I'm going to give it everything I've got and what will be, what will be. And, and what was that experience like walking into that dressing room at Gateshead, uh, obviously a significant, uh, a few levels higher than, than what you've been playing at. What, what was that like to walk in and, and have that opportunity? Yeah, it was quite um, overwhelming to be a part. I'm not really like a, a nervous person, but like when you've been out of the, like professional game for so long, going into that environment where they've been doing it all their lives um, and they're seasoned pros and there were some big big names in there as well at the time. Um, so it was quite overwhelming, but I just thought, look, I've got a great opportunity here. Um, I'm just going to work hard, give them all, show the gaffer that I do want to be a professional footballer. And like you say, it was a second chance that I wasn't going to let go. Was, was this the moment that Gateshead trial where perhaps your mind narrowed again it was about being a professional footballer or did you still have an open mind to, to whatever happened? Um, I think I still had like quite an open mind because um, I knew that I'd just graduated so I did have a, a job opportunity there if I wanted to but at the same time 
who isn't going to want to be a professional footballer? Like you've got a great opportunity to go and do the, the boyhood dream that most youngsters have is to be a full-time footballer. So I was going to... I didn't want to let the opportunity go, so I was quite narrow-minded at that time as well. Um, so I was being quite, like... I don't know, it's hard to, hard to explain. Like I was being quite... Um, selfish, so I couldn't think about it. Being quite selfish, so the only thing I wanted to do was get that contract. Um, I wasn't really thinking about too much else. Like there was lads in the team that I wanted to give my respect to, but at the same time, it's, it's your own career. Like football is a selfish sport. Um, Toast will agree on that as well. Like there's not many friends in uh, in football. You got to do things for yourself, and it's quite selfish. So at that time, I was just thinking about myself and just thinking, look, I just need to get this contract. You spoke right at the very start about maturity and not having the maturity at 18. Did, did you feel at 22 that you were a lot more mature and you were ready for that opportunity? Yeah, massively. Um, I think just building up from when I got released to when I signed my first contract, like d during that period, has allowed me to mature, like going away to university, living on my own, having to cook, clean, iron and do the things that some people take for granted when they're at home they don't have to do. So you had to go out and fend for yourself. And I think when that opportunity came around, I was mentally stronger, I was more confident and I had a lot more like confidence in my footballing ability as well, where, whereas when I got released, I'd, I'd started doubting myself and thinking, look, am I, am I even that good? But being an, allowed to go away and do it the hard way, I think at that time I was, I was ready to sign. I think I was like 22 at the time as well, so it was quite late to sign a professional deal, but like I said, I was, I was mentally strong then. It's interesting, isn't it? Because there, there seems to be an assumption in football that if you're not signed by about 15, that that's it, and it's, yeah. it's sort of game over. So for you to go in so late, did it sort of, was your mindset different at, at that point, I, I suppose is the question. Was your outlook different in terms of how you viewed everything? Yeah, I f well, like you say, it was, it was my second, I got a second chance. So at 22, like, it's is quite late to go into the game and sign a professional deal at 22. You don't see many people doing that, um, unless they've come up through non-league and stuff, but um, I think I always knew that I was going to have opportunities outside of football, but at that time I was thinking, look, I'm 22 years old now, like I want to start my career and trying to play as high as I can, as quick as I can, and um, luckily it's, it's worked out right. Mm. And, and for you, did you see a completely different loop that left the building as to the one which came in? No, no because of his character, mm. but um, yes, in terms of just being a bit more mature, which is natural, but because he, he got dabbed in the real world, which is a people can go either way with that. But I think Matt Henman probably needs a lot of credit, really, yeah. um, because Matt could have treated him like just an academy or a youth team player and gave him a few minutes and treated him nicely because he's a youth team player. Matt uh, treated him like every player, spoke to him in a in a way which was completely honest. Yeah put you under a lot of pressure technically and tactically, didn't he, and, and threw you in and treated you like a man. Yeah. And I think um, you responded brilliantly to him and I, and I think he needs to have a, a lot mm -hmm. behind that because if managers don't throw young players in, they don't yeah. get an opportunity, you know? Absolutely, how big was he for your, for your career? Yeah, he touched on that. I think it was massive, like, because you get 17, 18-year-olds coming out of academies and you're not really, they're not expected to start. And I think... I do owe Matt quite a lot, and I've said in like previous interviews and stuff, I've always mentioned his name and Dean Town just for giving me that opportunity to go and play a lot of games at that age. I think it's like massive. If you're not playing minutes at like 17 and 18, I think it will be harder to then kick on in your career, which is why like all the young lads now are going out on loan and playing playing a lot of football and being in that men environment, which helps later on in the career. Is that what makes this football club so special, the fact it does do that with young players? Even now we're seeing sort of a few come through and, and will do for, for so many years because of the building we're sat in and, and the programme that, that we have in place with, with Deze. Is, is that something that makes this football club so unique and so special? Yeah, I think so. Um, like I say, the Deerham Town are always producing young players. He, he mentioned Fraser there, who's done really well and signed for Peterborough. Um, he was just one of many lads that have been given that opportunity to go and play minutes. Um, I, I keep an eye on all the Deerham Towns like squads and stuff like via Twitter and stuff like that, and I can always see they're bringing through young players. Uh, every, there's always seemed to be like a an average age of something like what 22 or something like that. So they're, they're always being allowed to go and express yourself, and that's that's how you get seen, and that's how you get opportunities. If you're not playing football, 
no one's going to be able to see you to, to then tap you up. And, and getting that opportunity with Port Vale to go back into the Football League to, to be a professional, how, what did that mean to you, I suppose? Because you've been through football's rejection, you've come all the way back up, built yourself up, and then you get the phone call. What, what's that like as a player after experiencing everything that you've been through? It just felt like a, a massive relief just to show that all that hard work that's gone on from when I've been released to then getting back into like the Football League is just like just hard work, just well done. Like, it was just like, just giving himself a pat on the back and just say, look, you've got the opportunity now, you're, you're at a good level, you just need to kick on from here. And I think um, I owe Neil Aspin quite a lot as well. I, st I still see him as, as my gaffer because he was the person who gave me the opportunity at Gateshead. He um, then took me over to Port Vale and he, he allowed me to express myself and he, he played me literally every week. So without someone who's going to back you as a manager, and someone who sees sees potential in you, then you won't be able to go on and, and do things the way you want. Again, another question for both of you. Is, is football all about opportunity, or do you sort of make your own opportunities, do you think? A bit of both. Yeah, a bit of both. Because it's a team game, you rely on everyone around you. You know, It's like being a plumber and asking a plumber to do the electrics. It's not going to work, is it? Mm -hmm. So um, I think, again, going back to your Stuart Weber interview, he mentioned the particular type of player, no point at him being put in a team that kicked the ball long if he was a ball player. Now, I appreciate that at 16, you might throw someone in a different environment to toughen them up a little bit, but in the longevity of things, you want to be playing to your strength. So football is a little bit of luck, but you can make your own luck. Um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, I know he ain't here anymore, but he's got a successful business. He didn't give up after his first recipe, did he? I think he got 100 rejections. Did you know that? That's, that's Google a it. brilliant fact, that. Yeah, he didn't give up, did he? No, no he's not here to tell a story. Bless him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, great chicken. Love it. Not that I go anymore. <laughs> oh, what's the question? Um, <laughs> um, how, how do you reflect on everything now? Obviously, you're sitting at, at Cambridge United about to start a new season. How do you reflect on the journey you've been on? And I suppose, what, what would your message be to players who find themselves in a, in a similar situation that, that you were? Um, just, just stay humble and just... If you, you've either got it or you don't, I don't want to sound like patronise or anything, but if you haven't got that motivation or that mentality to want to go and succeed, then you can't, you can't put that into someone. You either want it or you don't. But um, I just say to the, like, the lads that asked me in, like, the, when I spoke at the awards and I was saying, look, just, just keep working hard. Um, opportunities always come and go. Like, you never know who's watching your games. That's why it's important to play the young players because people are coming to watch games. And if you're not out there to express yourself, you're never going to get, get seen by bigger and better clubs. On, on that, so if you were a young player in Norfolk, do you think, so there's a lot of things at the minute where people are getting trials really early, 12, you know, 15, and they're not quite ready. Do you think that it's about timing when you're ready to go for trials, or do you think it's about having as many trials as possible, or I think it's about the timing? Or should you go when you're ready? Um, bit of both, I think. Like if, if you're going on loads of trials, then it kind of... I don't know, it might disrupt your, your process because you, you go and you're trying around at loads of different clubs where if you've got someone who's, for example, playing in a lower league team and he's playing every week and you've got someone going around trialling in loads of teams and not playing many games, I think that person is going to be seen a lot more playing lower leagues because you see that people are always bringing through non-league players now. Like Peterborough are quite well known for bringing in non-league players and giving them the opportunities and then selling them on and making money that way. But... Um, I think, like I said, oh, well, I wasn't ready, was I, at 18? So I think I did had to wait for my opportunity, but it, it can be a bit of both. Does it almost make or break a player having a trial at the right time, do you think? I'm, I'm worried at the minute because I see a lot of kids getting promised things and they're going on lots of trials and they're nowhere near ready. And the, the problem with it is, is, is if, you, if you go on a trial at Cambridge United at 14 and you're not ready, and th but you are ready at say 16, they've already made yeah. Yeah. to a degree that's a preempted decision. So for me, yeah, failure is good sometimes because it makes you get better. But for me, the timing of it, I think sometimes at the minute, trials are getting handed out a bit sporadically to people that maybe are not ready mm -hmm. too early and then it has a detriment on their mindset and, and later on. So for, for, for me, it's about like, do people know when they are ready to have a trial? That's that's 
good question. But back, having a sorry, having a trial at twelve and getting rejected, and that door being completely slammed to having a trial at sixteen is a completely different experience, isn't it, for for a young player? It is. You're all, you, but, but then again, you're all, you know, it goes back to time and how you deal with that rejection. But for for me, if you earn an opportunity at a football club for a trial, completely understand. Well done, great. If if you're being pushed by someone and you're not ready, I'm not sure about that. I was going to say, like, I think it goes back to having trust. Like, you need people around you that are going to be honest with you. Don't, you don't want people around. Maybe you just need to stay, <laughs> stay on a level where you need people around you, close people that you trust to give you the right information and stuff like that. You don't want people feeding you false hope and stuff like Problem. that. If, if you're like a real top player and we're both your coaches at two different like clubs <laughs> and, and I go and I, and I tell you the truth, yeah, based on your FIFA performance, <laughs> and, and, and I tell you the truth and I go, actually, you're not ready, but he tells you a lie and he goes, you are ready, I'll get you a trial here, and you go with him because he, he sounds better. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Okay. Interesting. Um, just to finish up then, your, your career feels like it's gone full circle. You, you're back at Cambridge United now. Does it almost feel like you have a point to prove second time round? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to go back and prove people wrong and say, look, I, I know I wasn't ready and good enough at that age, but it almost feels like I've gone back to a club which gave me the opportunity to play professional football. So I feel like I've got to go back now and express myself and show them the journey that I've been on has, has been worth it. And I am doing really well at the moment and I'm enjoying my football so I just want to go out there this season and show the fans um, basically all the hard work that I've done and put it into use this season. And what, what are your personally and, and the club's aspirations for this season? Um, personally I just, <laughs> um, I just want to stay fit, play as many games as I can, um, show the gaffer that I'm working hard every day and if I'm not playing I'll still keep working hard to try and get back in the team and then if I am just keep my place every week by working hard but um, I think every season you've got to look to try and go up a league I'm not saying that we're going to get promoted this year or I don't want to jinx or anything but like you've got to have that mentality to think look I want to have a good season this year um, we've signed some good players um, we've got quite a young team as well so I think the energy levels and the, the running this season will be a lot a lot better as well so hopefully if we can push towards playoffs and finish the season well um, I think that's what we're hoping for and, and finally, Toast, how proud are you of the, of the guy that sits in front of you? Not to get too soft, being on the <laughs> to end it. God, they never let me at the end. Um, <laughs> no, just um, immensely proud of him as a character because he's a great lad, everyone knows that. Um, so brilliant. Um, but also, it sort of helps this because all the horrible things we're saying is right in the right, in right, in nicest respect. So, yeah, he's a product of this football club um, he's a product of if you look at the managers of this football club so Matt Simo Gussie they're all buying into the, the philosophy of this club which is play young players give them a chance and he's evidence why you should do that and I'm pretty sure there's a few out here at the minute that could follow in their footsteps let's hope so thank you mate thank top you. man cheers thanks Sophie.